Joining me now, Joel Griffith, Heritage Foundation of Research Fellow. Joel, great to see you. That was the problem with this uh, to begin with when President Biden announced it. So many people said, Joel, um, that he didn't have the authority to do it. And now six states are coming back and they're saying you need congressional authority to pass this kind of spending. And at the same time, you see him walking it back just a little bit by taking out those private loans um, and taking that pool of people out of it. Your thoughts on, on where this goes? Does he trim this a little bit more at this point and bow down to pressure? Well, the president, as a former lawyer, should know that what he did is unconstitutional. But even if what he did were constitutional, it's very expensive, it's very regressive, and its bottom line is it's unfair. You know, most Americans do not have a four-year college degree, and of those who have graduated with a four-year degree, nearly half graduate with zero student debt. Mm -hmm. So to force all of us, all of those who don't have a college education, to pay for that debt to the tune of $4,000 per family of four, that is going to get put into the hands of those that incurred these loans. It's morally wrong, and it's going to drive up inflation even more, because now people that should have been repaying their debts, now they're going to be out there competing with you, competing with me in the marketplace, driving up prices even further. Yeah, that's a great point, and that's what that will happen in the future. The tuition costs will just go up. The schools will realize that this is part baked into the cake, right? And, and they'll just be charging more, and, and people will be taking up bigger loans. Having said that, as Hillary pointed out, the population population that's getting aid here isn't a population that isn't able to actually pay the debt back. Um, the $4,000 per family that you mentioned, to me, that's a tax. But President Biden saying, nope, you got to step back from this. If you got PPP money, then, then why shouldn't they get student loan relief? Listen to this, Joel, and react on the other side. I don't want to hear a word from those members of Congress, if you notice, whose families got tens of thousands of dollars and several million dollars in pandemic relief loan forgiveness. The same ones criticizing. Give me a break. Come on. I'm so sick of Republicans saying we're the big spenders. Give me a break. We can afford to cancel $10,000 in student debt. Okay, so the problem that I see here essentially is that we were in the throes of a pandemic that we had not seen the likes of for 100 years. That was number one. We're out of that mode right now, Joel. Um, and the second issue is that those businesses and those PPP loans were designed to not only keep the businesses afloat, but all of the employees who worked for them as well. I mean, we couldn't essentially just let the whole economy shut down, flounder, and every business in the United States go, go out. So there's a big difference between comparing student loan forgiveness to the Paycheck Protection program. Well, what happened over the last two years was an abomination. Number one, shutting down the economy was dead wrong, but then pretending as if there aren't consequences, that was wrong as well. We saw Republicans and Democrats together spending trillions of dollars that we don't have, most of which was printed by our Federal Reserve, and we are bearing the consequences of that now with families experiencing the highest inflation in more than 40 years. <laughs> For giving these student loans, that adds insult to injury. That will actually exacerbate those inflationary fires. We should be learning of the mistakes of the past two years. We can't keep printing money and handing it out, whether it's to families or businesses or to students. You can't do that without consequences. And look, student debt, that is a big problem. We have seen the price of a college tuition rise at almost double the rate of inflation over the past 20 years. But that's the fault of the federal government that continues to subsidize right. college education, and it pads the pockets of professors, and it hurts everybody else. It reminds me a little bit of how they're handling the oil and gas situation. They're not tackling the root cause, right? They're trying to go yes. around it. And when it comes to education, they're not tackling that root cause either, which is the problem, you know, so then we get into this problem where tuitions continue to go up and, and this keeps going on and on and on instead of getting better. Having said that, midterms are around the corner. A lot of people say he signed off on this to not only pander to the progressive left, to which he probably made promises when he came into office, but also to get some of those young voters with the debt on his side going into the midterms. Oh, without a doubt, this is a giveaway to the tune of up to $20,000 per student. And I think it's important for those that are even beneficiaries of this forgiveness to understand what's going on here. We are diverting resources from businesses and from families, and we're putting that into the hands of these colleges that have trillions of dollars worth of endowments. Even the beneficiaries will be hurt longer term due to the slower growth that will result in the higher prices from this massive giveaway. Joel, great to see you tonight. Thank you so much for joining us.